In this video, we'll see how we find eigenvalues and eigenvectors for a diagonal matrix. We also call diagonal matrices as triangular matrices. What exactly are triangular matrices? Matrices where all the values above the diagonal are zero or values below the diagonal are zero. So, we'll start with an example. Let's say we have to find the eigenvalues and eigenvector for the given matrix A. Here you can see the diagonal elements are 4, 2 and 3 and the values below the diagonal are all 0. Such a matrix is called an upper triangular matrix. In such a case, the diagonal elements themselves are the eigenvalues. So, we have three eigenvalues, lambda 1 is 4, lambda 2 is 2 and lambda 3 is 3. We can always verify this. Let's use the formula lambda cube minus c0 lambda square plus c1 lambda minus c2 is equal to 0. In the previous video, you saw how we find c0, c1, c2. c0 is always the sum of the diagonals. c1 is the sum of the minors of the diagonal elements and C2 is nothing but the determinant itself. So when we calculate, we get C0 as 9, C1 as 26 and C2 as 24. Now when we substitute these values in our equation, lambda cube minus C0 lambda square plus C1 lambda minus C2, this is what we get lambda cube minus 9 lambda square plus 26 lambda minus 24 is equal to 0. We are supposed to now find all the three roots of this equation. So one way is to see what is the last term and then find all the divisors of that term. In our case, the last term is 24. Let's list all the divisors of 24. We get plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 3, plus minus 4, plus minus 6, plus minus 12 and plus minus 24. If you check one by one all these values, substitute them in the above equation, we will see lambda is equal to 2 satisfies the cubic. So, if we satisfy lambda is equal to 2, the equation is becoming 0, which means lambda minus 2 is one of the factors. We will divide this equation by lambda minus 2 and we will get lambda square minus 7 lambda plus 12 as the quotient. So if we solve lambda square minus 7 lambda plus 12 is equal to 0, we will get other two values of lambda as 4 and 3. These three values of lambda 2, 4 and 3 is what we had found directly from the triangular or the diagonal matrix. There's another way of finding these three roots. We call it the synthetic division method. What exactly is this method? We will first write the coefficients in one row. So if you see first coefficient that is coefficient of lambda cube is 1, we write that. Coefficient of lambda square is minus 9, we write that. We then write 26 which is the coefficient of lambda and then the constant term minus 24. One of the roots was lambda is equal to 2. We write that on the left and then draw a line below and just copy the first element down just under the line. We will now multiply 2 by 1. So we get 2. We will copy it below minus 9 and add minus 9 and 2 which gives us minus 7. We repeat the same thing. We will now multiply our root 2 with minus 7 and place it below 26. So 2 into minus 7 is minus 14 which we place under 26. Add 26 and minus 14. This will give us 12. So when we multiply the root 2 by 12 and place it under minus 24 and add, we will be getting 0, which is how it should be. 
So, this 1, minus 7 and 12, these are the coefficients of an equation in lambda square. We'll write 1 into lambda square minus 7 into lambda plus 12 is equal to 0. Which this gives us a quadratic. When we solve, we get the other two roots, 4 and 3. So those who did not know what synthetic method, synthetic division is, this is how we do. So all the three roots we have found. Now let's say we have to find the eigenvector for corresponding to all these three values. We will find them one by one. The process is the same. Let's start with lambda 1 is equal to 4. Again, we will form the matrix A minus lambda i x is equal to 0. We will substitute lambda 1 is equal to 4. And you can see that this matrix becomes 0 minus 1, 3, 0 minus 2, 1 and 0, 0 minus 1. So when we solve the system, we can directly solve. We'll just write minus 1 into x2 plus 3 x3 is equal to 0 and minus 2 x2 plus x3 is equal to 0. Last equation will be minus 1 into x3 is equal to 0 which gives us x3 is equal to 0. When we substitute x3 is equal to 0 in the above two equations, we get x2 as 0 and because x1 does not appear in the equations, it means x1 is some constant k. This gives us the eigenvector k0,0. If we pull out k outside, we will get the vector as 1, 0, 0. Okay. So, let's try the Cramer's rule for solving these equations. So, we will write x1 upon Let's go back to the equations. We will write x1 upon minus 1, minus 2, 3, 1. The determinant of this is equal to x2 upon the determinant of 3, 1, 0, 0. And x3 upon the determinant of 0, 0, minus 1, minus 2. This gives us x1 upon 5 x2 upon 0 and x3 upon 0. Let's equate this to k. This gives us x1 is 5, x2 is 0, x3 is 0. Hence, the eigenvector corresponding to lambda is equal to 4 is x is equal to 5, 0, 0. For lambda is equal to 2, we get 4 minus 2 minus 1, 3, 0, 2 minus 2, 1, 0, 0, 3 minus 2. This is when we have substituted lambda is equal to 2 in A minus lambda i, x is equal to 0. This will give us the following matrix system. 2 minus 1, 3, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, x is equal to 0. You can see two of the rows in the matrix are identical. So we will use the first and the second one. This will give us 2x1 minus x2 plus 3x3 is equal to 0 and from the second equation we get x3 is equal to 0. We can see the second column does not have a pivot so x2 is an independent variable. We'll take it as k. Let's put x3 is equal to 0 and x2 is equal to k in our first equation. This gives us x1 is half k. Let's put the values of x1, x2, x3. This gives us the eigenvector half k, k0. If we pull out the k, we get half 1, 0. This is the eigenvector. We can always multiply the whole column by 2 and get the vector 1, 2, 0. So, for lambda is equal to 2, the eigenvector is 1, 2, 0. For lambda is equal to 3, when we substitute this value in A minus lambda i, x is equal to 0, we will get the matrix 1 minus 1, 3, 0 minus 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. We can see that here, 
one whole row in the end is zero. If we use the first two rows and use the Cramer's rule, we will get x1 is 2k, x2 is minus k and x3 is minus k. We'll form the eigenvector 2k minus kk. Pull the k out. We get the vector as 2 minus 1 minus 1. This is the vector eigenvector corresponding to lambda is equal to 3. Thank you so much.